Good morning. Um, I'm here to tell another story <clears throat> about the 65 years uh, celebration that we're having with Faith City Mission and all the wonderful things that God has done over the years. You know, I wish their stats had been collected years back. They weren't, so we don't really have those stats. We, we were very diligent. I think we started in like 2000. We started doing stats and how many meals we feed, how many people have gotten salvation, how many um, people have uh, graduated the, the program. And so um, they're exciting. They really are. I, and I'll give you a few right now. Um, about We feed about 84,000 people meals a year. And that's a lot of meals. And so what uh, we have is a, a concentrated, highly effective um, food services department with a chef who actually makes incredible meals. We don't serve goulash anymore. <laughs> we did when I first got here, it was terrible. But, um, you know, chicken cacciatore and spinach lasagna and fabulous soups. Every Wednesday we have wonderful hearty soups, whether it's navy bean soup or tortilla, chicken tortilla soup or um, he's just a great cook and he's always experimenting on us. Uh, this, uh, the other day we had actually had grilled pork chops and whole mushrooms and a big salad. And so we feel it's important that we treat the poor with respect uh, as far as what they eat and what's healthy for them. And that's important to us too. At any rate, um, one of the other stats I'd like to share is last year, about 600 people got saved uh, in our chapel that we recorded. And um, so that's that means everything to me because if you just mul do the multiplication, 600, let's say, rounded off to 500 times 65 years, extraordinary. I, it's really incredible. And uh, it makes me excited to see God use a little bitty, tiny, homeless shelter to do his will on the earth. Nothing makes me happier, frankly, than getting to see God use a little tiny, tiny homeless shelter to minister to his favorites. I'm sorry, I know he doesn't have favorites, but I'm telling you, he loves the poor. He loves the poor and the homeless and the addicted, and he does things for them I haven't seen him do for others. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was in chapel. I had a guest speaker with me. He is an old, old friend who actually raised me up. After I got saved 32 years ago, he taught me everything I knew about the Word of God and the power of the Word of God. Uh, just growing up, you know, just growing into a mature Christian and, and learning the very basics. And he was so kind to me because at that time, I struggled terribly with panic disorder and had since I was 13. And um, I, I could, you know, I just couldn't overcome it, especially in the middle of the night. And he was so kind to me that in the middle of the night, if I needed to call him and say, you got to pray for me and talk me off the ledge here. I can't, I can't get a grip on this. And he always did. He was there, you know, in those dark, dark nights. And um, that means everything to me. And he's also just an extraordinary preacher. And I love sitting under him. But he was my guest that day. And so he gave an extraordinary sermon and um, lots of salvations. Just the greatest guy in the world. And didn't, uh, I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, at any rate, uh, we said, if you need prayer for anything, you come forward, we'll pray for you. And uh, so several did. We prayed for them. And uh, a girl came up and she was probably 60 or so and she was crying. And uh, she had on a smock that buttoned down the front and, and her belly was so bulged that the buttons were taut. You know, it was barely buttoning. And um, she said, my belly hurts so bad. My belly hurts so bad. And uh, and I, I, I'm and she was in so much pain. And I thought, oh my gosh, I think we should call 911. Forget the prayer. We, we, let's get serious here. We're going to call 911 and get you in the hospital, honey. And, um, and Dennis Latham said, pray for her. Just pray for her. So I laid my hand on her belly and I began to pray for her. And 
uh, just healing, just healing, that the Lord would come and heal, that Holy Spirit would come and brood over her and, and heal whatever this was, this bulging, bulging belly. And um, all of a sudden, crazy, crazy, that belly, it's like a balloon popped and it poof and it disappeared and her smock hung loosely and I couldn't, I, 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 I was in shock. I, I said, I, wh what just happened? So I turned to Dennis. I said, Dennis, did you see that? Did you see that happen? And he said, yes, Jenna, I did. I saw it. Her belly's gone and she's in no more pain. She wasn't just smiling. She's all happy. Skips off to lunch. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to believe this. I don't even know how to record this. It was the most extraordinary thing to see that bulging belly just poof, gone. I've heard of it happening, but I've never experienced it. And we did that day. And I'm telling you, if Dennis hadn't confirmed it, I think I was seeing things. It was the most extraordinary thing to see that belly. You know, was it cirrhosis of the liver? I don't know what it was. Was it hep C? Maybe. I don't know. I know she was in a great deal of pain and crying and that God came and the thing disappeared. Tumor? I it doesn't matter. He knows. And she sure is happier. So that's a great, great story. I love that one because it's so different. And, um, and she got healed. God, he's amazing. He's amazing. These little sweet ones that he, he just, they're off the street. They come, they're just children, really. And so dear to me, so dear to me. They mean, it's the passion of my life. And you know, what if I'd miss this? You know, I was trying to be a professional artist and I was for 30 years, but God had all along, God had another plan for my life. Shocking. Shocking. And here's the deal. We don't know the whole end of the story. We'll get to see it all in panoramic view when we get to heaven. But in the meantime, I take it one day at a time and one little person at a time. And here's what I've heard Heidi Baker say that means everything to me. It's become my motto. Stop for the one in front of you. Stop and notice intentionally the one in front of you. Ask their name. Ask about them. Make conversation with them. Pay attention to them, love them, hug them. Sweet, kind smiles and words can do so much for someone uh, in this situation. So, 65 years, great stories. Mm -hmm.